So you've learned a little bit about the HELOC and now you're ready to go get your own. Well, today I'm gonna give you the five things you need to almost guarantee your approval when you reach out to get your very first HELOC. Now I'm gonna cover the bare minimums that you need so you may be able to find a lender out there that's willing to negotiate or have more wiggle room than I'm gonna cover. But if you can hit these five minimum criteria that I'm gonna give you, almost every lender across the board will be more than happy to give you a HELOC. So if you're new here, I'm Tyler Wayrung and I'm a HELOC enthusiast and wrote the book Unlocking Millions that talks all things HELOC. If you love HELOCs too and are excited to start using them, I would invite you to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're updated every time I drop a new HELOC video. But with that guys, let's go ahead and jump in on the five things you need to get approved for your HELOC. All right, the first thing you need may shock you, but you actually need some home equity. Most lenders want you to have at least 20% equity but even better if you have more than that. If you're interested in trying to figure out how you understand or how you know what your equity position is in your home, check out this video up here where I talk all about how to find your equity position and how much you can pull out with a HELOC. But just know for now, you at least need a 20% equity position so you actually have something to tap into with your HELOC. The second thing you need is a good credit score. Good credit score is typically considered at least a 670. Now you might find some lenders who go lower than that even, but just know if you have at least a 700 credit score, you can check this box. The third thing you need is a debt to income ratio at or below 40%. And let's talk a little bit about what that means. So debt to income is a measure of how much money you make versus how much money that you have going out every month in payments. And you find your number by understanding first your gross income. Now your gross monthly income is different from what hits your checking account. That that's your net income or that's your gross income after they take out all the taxes, all the other things that come out of your paycheck, and then you get what's left over. So you'll have to find your pay stub here and look at what that top line across the top is. That's your gross income. And then we want to figure out what do you owe total in monthly payments? These are things like car loans, student loans, your home mortgage, right? So you want to total all those up and then you divide your total monthly payments by your gross income to get your debt to income ratio as a percentage. So for example here, if you make $5,000 a month in gross income, and then you have $2,000 a month going out to service your debts, so that's a total of all those loans that you have to make monthly payments on, $2,000 out of $5,000, if we divide that, would give you 0.4 or 40%. And so you need to be at or below 40%. Again, some lenders will let you go a little higher than that, but they want to make sure that most of your income is available to feed your family, to do other things that you need to do on a monthly basis and of course you have money to make this new HELOC payment if they're gonna give you one number four is you need a steady income so this can be two years worth of w-2s that's the typical standard there if you're a 1099 and you'll likely need at least two years of 1099s and then they're likely gonna average those out over time so this is often difficult for someone just getting started let's say you're a new agent or you're a new freelancer and last year was a little slow for you you may have to wait a little bit until you have two consecutive solid years that they can use to underwrite you for this new HELOC. Now this one's pretty specific, so I recommend you reach out to a few lenders and understand exactly what they're looking for from someone in your specific scenario because this one can have some wiggle room involved. All right, and then the last thing here is you don't want any late payments for probably at least the last two years. Now I know this probably will be factored in from a credit score perspective, but what I've found is that HELOC lenders go back and do an extra check on late payments because hey, they're gonna be lending you some money. They wanna know if you're the kind of person who is gonna make late payments and they're not gonna potentially get their money back that they're lending you. So guys, I hope that was helpful. Again, if you can check all those five boxes without even thinking about it, then I can almost guarantee that you'll be approved right out of the gates. If there's a couple that you're on the fence on, that's when you wanna reach out and have a deeper conversation with a specific lender. Once you have your HELOC established and you wanna know what you can do with it, I wrote the book called Unlocking Millions, The Ultimate Guide to using and investing with the HELOC, where I teach you exactly how I built my rental portfolio with the HELOC. But if you're still in the phase of chatting with lenders and understanding what questions you need to ask them, watch this video right here, where I walk you through the complete phone guide that covers every question you need to ask a HELOC lender before you get signed up for yours so you know exactly what to expect. But with that, guys, we'll go ahead and wrap. I'm Tyler Wayrun, and we'll catch you next.